Hey Heresy players, do you want to know what the best legions are? Who has the best traits and the most powerful abilities so you can dominate on the tabletop? Yeah, sorry, I don't care. No, in this video we're going to build a tier list for the legions, but based on the lore. At the outbreak of the Horus Heresy, which legions were the most and the least powerful? So, how can we accurately measure the strength of a legion? Well, in the old Horus Heresy Black books, they actually give us numbers. Usually just the estimated number of legionnaires, but also often the estimated size and composition of their fleets, as well as anything else we should know, like access to specific technologies or specialist weapons. It even outright states sometimes which legions were considered to be mid-tier at the time. And this changed a bit over the course of the Great Crusade, as legions were ravaged by war or by by new recruits, and also once the heresy started as Horus's initial moves played out. So in this video we're going to create a tier list for two specific points. First, the strength of the 18 legions just before the outbreak of the Horus heresy, and then how that changed after the initial big battles at Prospero, Kalth, and Istvan. Okay, here's the template. I'll be ranking the legions from A to D tier, with traditional S tier for the really powerful ones, and just so you know, I'm mostly basing this on numbers of legionnaires, with other factors shifting them up or down a tier, depending what they are. The range we're talking about is pretty big, but at the start of the heresy, the smallest legions tended to be just under 100,000 legionnaires in total, spread out across the galaxy, while the really big ones could be more than double that. So I've split that across our five tiers, but we'll see what happens when we go through them. Right, I'll run through them in legion order. In the very early days of the crusade, the Dark Angels were by far the biggest legion, with one of the biggest and most powerful fleets, but the Rangdan Xenocides and other wars earlier in the crusade had left them badly mauled and they'd lost a bit of their prominence over the latter part of the crusade. Even so, by the time the heresy broke out, they were still numbered at just under 200,000 legionnaires, which is huge. That still made them one of the biggest legions by a big margin. Plus, as the first legion, they'd been given access to ships and weaponry none of the others were allowed. So at the start of this war, they were easily one of the strongest legions. Their numbers alone would have put them in the A category, but with the crazy weapons and ancient fleet, well, I'm not sure how tier lists are meant to go, but we're starting off with an S. The Dark Angels are S tier. Right, probably shouldn't have done this in Legion order. Anyway, let's return to normality for a bit. The Emperor's children had suffered early in the Crusade from a gene seed blight that stopped them from growing, but they'd come back from that and built themselves back up to a pretty respectable 110,000 Legionnaires with an attendant fleet. They may well have thought of themselves as perfect, but that only really gets them a C grade when compared to the rest. The fourth legion, however, the Iron Warriors, had the opposite story. Their gene seed was so stable they'd always been one of the largest legions, but over the course of the crusade they'd been deployed into so many attrition campaigns that it had started to take a toll on their numbers. Even so, at the start of the heresy they were estimated at between 150 and 180,000 legionnaires, along with more armoured support and a much greater pool of recruits than any of the other legions, which puts them firmly in the A tier as one of the strongest legions. Next up, it's the White Scars. They'd spend a lot of the Crusade far away from the centres of Imperial power, and they had a pretty good fleet which had been modified extensively, but however good it was, they were never that big as a legion, barely topping 90,000 legionnaires, which means that although they're my favourite, they're also our first D tier. Now, a controversial one. The Space Falls have been known as the Emperor's Executioners for ages, even if it was mostly just them saying that, and their entry in the Black Books notes the aura of fear that came with them as being particularly potent, and that they were seen as a particularly strong threat to the traitor cause. But looking at the numbers, it's all smoke and mirrors. They only really had around 100,000 legionnaires, and it's also stated that their warriors weren't actually any better than any others. They might look scary, but I think they're only a C. Contrast this with the Imperial Fists. They also had around 100,000 Legionnaires, which would put them in C2 if it wasn't for their fleet. The Imperial Fist fleet numbered around 1,500 ships, which even at conservative estimates puts their number of capital ships at three or four times that of some other legions. And it was led by the ancient star fortress, the Phalanx. Plus, of course, at the start of the heresy, 
They were fortified in the solar system. Imperial fists in a defensive position. Unlike the Wolves of Fenris, that is a tangible upgrade, and I'm going to put them in B. Right, the Night Lords were a difficult one to gauge. At the end of the Heresy, they were renegade in all but name, and they've been away from the centres of power for ages, so estimates place their strength at between 90 and 120,000 Legionnaires, but for various reasons, it's entirely possible they were bigger than that. I'm going to err on the larger number here and say that they're one of the more powerful of the C tier, possibly veering their way near to a B tier. And the Blood Angels had a similar strength, 120,000 warriors and one of the most glorious reputations of any of the legions. But we're not measuring reputations here, only strength. And the reason the angels get a bump up is, again, fleet size. They had an estimated 300 capital ships, and though they had limited support vessels for all those, it's enough to push them out of sea and firmly into the B tier. Now, the Iron Hands fare similarly to many of the others. They were one of the stars of the early crusade, but by the point of the heresy, that star had started to wane. And their numbers topped out at around 113,000 with 100 capital vessels. But they were extremely well supplied with lots of the most modern armor, weaponry, and systems, second only to the Iron Warriors. They're a difficult one. I think they could be at C or B. I'm going to be generous and put them in the B tier, but, you know, up for debate. Anyway, while the last two legions scrape their way into the B tier for various reasons, the World Eaters don't need a fleet to get them there. They only ever had around 70 capital ships, but even after 200 years of brutal attrition warfare and horrendous losses, they still numbered a healthy 150,000 legionnaires with a lot of support from Titan legions and Mechanicum. They're firmly in the B tier. Right, and here's the really big one. The Ultramarines were late starters in the Crusade, but the organisational skill of their Primarch, their massive recruitment base, and their very stable Gene Seed had all contributed to a very large and powerful Legion. At the start of the Heresy, the Ultramarines were, by any measure, the largest legion, numbering somewhere between 200 and 250,000 legionnaires alongside massive auxiliary forces. Their fleet was also extensive, as you might expect, but it was mostly made up of smaller craft. They only had around 30 capital ships, but even so, their numbers alone make them the second legion to go in the S tier. Right, onto the Death Guard. Mortarion had organised his legion optimistically. Their official Grand Company system had places for almost half a million warriors, but they never actually grew to that size. They only really ever recruited from one planet, so despite their famed endurance, a campaign of hellish environments and attrition warfare means they only had around 95,000 legionnaires and a respectable fleet at 70 capital vessels. I'm going to say they scraped their way into C tier. And so we reached the smallest of the legions. Gene seed stability problems had always racked the Thousand Suns, and even by the outbreak of the Heresy, they were still by far the smallest legion. They only had 80 to 85,000 legionnaires riding around in just 40 capital ships. I know they're all space wizards, but that's still a D. Now, the Sons of Horus, as you might expect, were in quite a good position going into the war they actually chose to start. They maintained a pretty healthy strength of between 130 to 170,000 legionnaires, which is like mid to strong, but we also have to account for the Horus effect. Not only were the Sons of Horus really well supplied and armed going into this, they also had arguably the greatest of the Primarchs at their head. Their size alone would happily land them in B, but I think in terms of their actual threat level, they get upgraded to A tier. And the word bearers, for different reasons, get a similar jump. After their admonishment early in the crusade for being, well, religious nutcases, they'd grown their numbers, officially clocking in at around 140,000 legionnaires. But that was a lie. The word bearers had been planning for this longer than anyone else, and they knew they'd have to fight their hated enemy, the Ultramarines. So they'd been recruiting like crazy, and their actual numbers were closer to 180 or 190,000. As well as this, they'd covertly expanded their fleet, possibly to a size comparable to the Imperial Fists, but of smaller vessels backed up by a few large super weapons. They're the biggest of the Traitor Legions, and easily a high A tier. I think probably just short of S. 
The 18th Legion, though, the Salamanders, had never been that large. They only ever grew very slowly during the Crusade and were known as one of the smallest legions with a comparably sized fleet. Estimates suggest they could field around 89,000 legionnaires, which puts them in the D tier along with the next legion, the Raven Guard. Again, one of the smaller legions, though remarkably cohesive and well supplied, the Raven Guard could only field around 81,000 legionnaires. Now, there's a bit of an unknown quantity here. Many Many of the original Terran members of the 19th have been sent off in nomad predation fleets because Korax didn't like their tactics and they were patrolling the very borders of the galaxy. But since they never really came back and did anything during the heresy, I don't think we can really count them as part of their strength. The Raven Guards stay down in the D tier. And finally, the hardest legion to measure, the Alpha Legion. Official estimates have them at 90,000 legionnaires, but we all know that that's a lie. The Alpha Legion very deliberately hid their strength from both their allies and their enemies throughout the Great Crusade, but it's known that they were remarkably well equipped, and given how many actions they took part in, a more realistic estimate places them at around 180,000 legionnaires, with a very large fleet, but which, like the Ultramarines, was mostly made up of smaller craft. Even so, our final legion goes into A. So there we are. Looking at this, you can really see why Horus moved the Loyalist legions around so much in the run-up to the Heresy. The most powerful legions, the Dark Angels and Ultramarines, were both Loyalists, and both assigned to the far away fringes of the galaxy, along with other threats like the Blood Angels, leaving only much smaller legions in the heart of the Imperium, ready to respond to Istvan. Even the Space Wolves being sent to fight the Thousand Suns at Prospero seems like a fortuitous thing for the War Master. The two legions were both on the smaller side and capable of inflicting a lot of damage on each other. The initial battles of the Heresy, engineered by Horus, really changed this tier list. First off, the Space Wolves assault Prospero, and with the support of the Custodes and Sisters of Silence, they almost destroyed the Thousand Suns. Estimates place the 15th Legion at only a few thousand remaining. So it looks like we've now got an F tier for those that are probably too small to really compete. Then the four initial traitor legions purged themselves of their own loyalists on Isfan 3, and a few of them suffered greatly from that. The World Eaters lost a quarter of their number there, dropping them down to around 115,000 and into tier C, and the Emperor's Children did even worse, dropping down to only around 60,000 and well into tier D. But the Death Guard and the Sons of Horus seem to have fared a lot better and probably remain where they were. When the Imperium then responded, it dispatched seven legions to Isfan V, but four of these turned traitor and gunned down the other three at the drop site massacre. In this, almost the entire Raven Guard and Salamander's legions were wiped out, with the remaining strength being about 4,000 for the Raven Guard and around 6,000 for the Salamanders, moving them both down into the F tier. The third Loyalist Legion, the Iron Hands, are a bit harder to rank. They were so impetuous that their vanguard dropped down before the majority of the Legion caught up. So although they were destroyed, the Legion as a whole didn't suffer as heavy losses as the Raven Guard or Salamanders did. But they did lose their Primarch in that assault. He was the first to die, and they were a particularly bad Legion for that to happen to. So while the loss of numbers pushes them down to a tier C, the fact that they were reduced to guerrilla warfare anyway, barely able to operate as a Legion anymore, pushes them further down the list. Even though they technically still had numbers, they're probably a D tier in terms of threat. Finally, during the battle at Kalth, the word bearers ambushed the Ultramarines and, to be honest, did it really, really well. Of the maybe 250,000 Ultramarines, around 200,000 have mustered at Kalth, and after the battle, only around 40,000 remained there, which means the Ultramarine strength spread out across the galaxy was only around 90,000. The remnants were all still really well organized and supplied though, and they were able to recruit quickly from their Ultramar empire, so I'm gonna drop them down to C tier. And there we are, a tier list for the legions at the outbreak of the heresy, and after Horus's opening moves had played out, evening the playing field a bit for the traitors. Most of the Loyalist Legions at this point were on the back foot, and the only ones with significant numbers remaining far off on the other side of the galaxy. Well done, Horus, I guess. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like another one of these videos, well, there's probably a little box there just on the right coming up. And if you'd like to see some of these videos a bit earlier or support the channel generally, well, there's a Patreon link below. See ya.